All right, we're back on the Chase Must Podcast, taping this late on a Wednesday with a first timer. We've got Scott Meadows up there in Pigeon Forge. I'm not really good with directions. I don't know uh, what direction I'm going if I'm going to Gatlinburg from downtown Knox. Where? Which way is that, Scott? Do you know? Well, you, uh, you to get to Gatlinburg, you'd have to go through Pigeon Forge from right. Knox. Yeah. So which yeah, way yeah. am I going though? Which, is that north, south, east, or west? Which, which way am I going? And I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad with directions. I don't even say like because uh, I, I know I know which way to put, point my car and to go. Exactly. So, you know, uh, they tell us that in school, you know, the north wing's got this and south wing, and I don't know which one's which. So I'm I'm right in the middle. So I just take both both of them as breaks. So you know, it is what it is. So I I don't know. I have no earthly idea. I'm gonna let's say uh, let's say northeast. How's that? Okay. There we go. Right. I'll take it. I'll take it. Go. Um, well, I'm excited to talk with you tonight about your program and everything you got going on. You had a big time season in 2021, uh, mm -hmm. a lot to be proud of with the run that y'all went on last year, uh, before the Alcoa playoff game. But I, I want to start just, how's your summer going? Uh, what, uh, what have you been able to do the dead period? Um, obviously right here, uh, for Tennessee football, but, uh, high school football, but were you able to get a lot of your installs in, do a lot of what you wanted to do? I imagine most things are back to normal for the most part, right? They are. They are. We uh, we started, uh, we get out of school a little bit later than most uh, most counties in the, huh. in the, in the state, uh, simply because of tourism, uh, because we started school later. Uh -huh. and everybody else, just because a lot of students in the county, they work, and a lot of teachers actually, work in the tourism, you know, whether it be at Dollywood or whether it be at, you know, the hotels or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we start school a little bit later. And uh, so we didn't get out of school until actually June 1st. And oh, wow. um, yeah, so uh, then we have, uh, that was a Wednesday. And then uh, we had, um, uh, well, I call it a freshman training camp because we, we can't have our freshmen come in with us until school is out uh hmm. is dismissed and they're actually part of the high school at that point and um so we had a freshman training camp on uh, uh second and third thursday and friday and then we brought the varsity in starting june 6th and um we got a lot we got a lot done uh we've got um you know a lot of uh strength and conditioning we, we go three hours a day hmm. and uh, first hour and a half we go uh strength conditioning, strength and conditioning. And then the last hour and a half, we actually practice. And uh, so we got a lot of install in offensively and defensively. And um, we did that for three weeks. And now we're on dead period for the next two weeks. And uh, mm -hmm. we should go back July 11th. So do you, do you feel pretty good? Like with June 1st, getting out of school, are you like, how do you uh, divide your spring, uh, your spring strategy with your summer? Is it different than most programs around the state? Do you have to kind of go about it in a different way? Well, I'm going to, uh, yeah, kind of, I guess we, we, you know, we've, uh, we've got, um, we try to push our spring practice back as far as we can. And mm -hmm. so it will, um, we kind of butt up against the uh, week before final exams and then the following week is summer workouts and so we just mm -hmm. kind of uh put it in a in different steps that we're going to be um uh, you know our spring practice may have started may uh just mm -hmm. may 8th i don't remember the exact date but you know we just have that one week off during dead or i'm sorry during uh um final exams and then we just kind of pick up where we left off from spring practice mm -hmm. so we just try to make it a just a, a good flow there interesting so when you uh when you look at where your team's at how much do you think is going to be different from a season ago have you been uh, like i'm always curious because you don't know who's coming into the program obviously you talk about the eighth graders mm -hmm. not being able to get in until uh school's out and kind of figuring out what your roster is going to look like. Do you have a pretty good feel at this point? Like we're almost in June and we're in the dead period. Like you talked about, like, do you have a good idea of what you're going to be able to do based on last year? Or do you think it's still uh, a lot of the summer is going to dictate uh, how much changes from a season ago? Well, we've got, we've got a lot of starters coming back from last mm -hmm. year. And so, um, I mean, you know, I'm pretty much like every other coach. I'm, I'm, 
uh, cautiously optimistic, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, so, uh, because, you know, anytime you're dealing with 14 to 18 year old kids, I mean, mm. you, you know, you, if somebody breaks up with a girlfriend that day or something like that, I mean, you know, it's going to be bad, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, I feel good. I feel good about our team. I feel mm -hmm. I do. And, uh, you know, we've got two kids that they were first team all state. They were coming back this next year and, uh, one's a defensive lineman and one's a running back. And, uh, you know they've been great leaders during the uh, during the summer, but the uh, the whole senior class really have been have been tremendous leaders for us. So uh, you know as long as you have that and and uh, kind of build on what we did the last year and and the previous year, um, then you've got a good you know you got a good foundation. Who are you looking at outside of uh, the returning starters to really step up as as leaders this fall? Well, the, you know, we've got some kids that we've got a couple of kids that's transferred in and, mm -hmm. um, the, and I think that they could be pretty special for us. And, and, um, you know, we've got, um, we've got one player, uh, well, we've got a couple of players actually that run them back type kids and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, one's named Carson Blaylock, one's name is, uh, uh Blake Hill. And, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, I think they will be, be very, very good, um, you know, uh, from a returning standpoint, returning starter standpoint, you know, Aiden Howard is is um, just going to be a junior, and he he's he's a special football player, and mm -hmm. uh, so he's also a running back. And, and with us running the wing tee, it, it you know we've got um, we we feel very comfortable playing. You know, our, obviously our starters, but we've also got some very very capable backups now. Uh, you know. Uh, on the offensive line, you know, we, we've got, we got three of our five guys returning, you know, and so uh, then defensively, you know, we, we played really, really well last year and we've got a lot of those guys coming back, you know, so um, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a whole lot of fun watching them. And, um, you know, uh, unless, you know, uh, unless they're high school kids and uh, you have to pull your hair out, that's the reason I shaved my head. So uh, there, you I can't go. Do that. there you go. That's it. Um, so the wing tee is so interesting because not obviously not a lot of programs out there running that anymore. Um, is that your preferred offensive philosophy? Is that just kind of the nature of the the region that you're coaching in? That for whatever reason the wing tee is just the best offense with the kind of players that you're getting. Would you run something different depending on where you're at, or is this kind of your bread and butter uh, mm -hmm. system? Yeah, no, I've I've been running that ever since I've been been a head coach and and. Mm. and um, um, Whenever I was an assistant coach, I would actually only try to work for people that ran the wing tee. And just because mm. I just love the offense and there's so many things that you can do. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, I'm going to say seven years ago, we, we went to more of a shotgun wing tee stuff and, and, uh, you know, a lot of formations and so forth, but it, it's got a, there's so many different things you can do with it um, and the type of players that you've got, you know, you don't have to have those, you know, big, you know, six, four, 300 pound linemen. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you just, it's a lot of angle blocking and so forth. And, and uh, it's, um, I think it's a tremendous offense, but you know, that the wing T is my philosophy, but there's different, um, ways of running the wing tee. In other words, you know, you got the buck series, you got the uh, belly series and so mm -hmm. forth. And so you've just kind of got to, and I always tell my coaches this, we're going to mold our philosophy to what the players can do to be successful. You know, we're not going to beat, beat down the, you know, uh, door with saying, okay, we're running this play and we've got to be able to, and well, if the kids can't do it, Okay, you've got to be able to kind of mold your offense to what the players can do to be successful. Is there something that um, I'm always curious because like uh, there's just so many teams that run zone schemes now and mm -hmm. it's what you want to do is where um, you have to be a lot more uh, just with I think in college in the NFL, if you watch a lot of tape and you examine like what they're doing, like it's there's a lot more that they have to do to high, like if this is run and pass, like whether that's a lot more motion, whether that's a lot more the high hat, low hat reads where they're disguising that and mm -hmm. just making sure the defense cannot just look, okay, all the, all high hats, like we know where this is going. 
for wing T, is there a way because it's a lot of zone blocking that you're able to disguise what uh, what you're doing more so to keep defenses honest in that regard? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, mm. you know, there, there's so many different, you know, if, if you run one particular play, you've always got a counter off of it. Yeah. And so, but all the blocking scheme looks a whole lot the same, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, and you alluded to it just a little bit ago, not very many people run this type of offense. So, you know, we've got, um, we try to run so many different formations and these, these plays, the defense preparing for us that week don't have that much time to prepare for us. You know, yes. they, they, you know, especially if you're playing, you know, week four, week five or whatever the case is. I mean, they, they've got basically three days okay, yeah. to prepare for something they've never seen. And yeah, so, they're mostly dealing with 11 personnel week to week. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that, that, that's the biggest thing is, uh, you know, we, we want to be able to do stuff, um, you know, and, you know, I, I just hired a coach that we, I actually coached against last year. And, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, well, anytime, you know, where you're playing a Scott Meadows team, you're going to be, you've got to stop the buck sweep, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so he came to our spring practice and we didn't put buck sweep in at all because mm-hmm. we didn't have, we don't have that type of person in personnel. You know, we've mm-hmm. got a different type of personnel to run, you know, the belly or the belly option or stuff like that. But everything we want to make sure everything looks the same. Mm-hmm. And um, but and you know, and again, you're dealing with 14 to 18 year old kids. If you give them a little bit of eye candy in the backfield, mm-hmm. okay, and their eyes go one way or the other, uh, then you got them. You know, and so uh, uh, so it, it's um, you know a lot of people think it doesn't don't like this offense and. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of people that don't like it usually can't stop it. Well, it's just a pain. It was. Just, it's just one of those things, like you said, and what you're talking about, where it's like when you're so used to eleven personnel and a certain mm-hmm. kind of scheme, like you cannot. Like defensive coordinators are just frustrated because they're like, "We're not going to see this." Re- like you're not going to spend the summer playing, uh, teaching right. your guys to defend the wing tee. They just can't. Right. Right. And no, they're they're not. I mean, you know, you know. Our big thing is we don't have a whole lot of running plays and we don't have a mm-hmm. whole lot of passing plays. But what we try to do is add so many different formations that we can run every single running play or pass play out of all these different formations. Now, mm-hmm. in saying that, you know, a lot of teams will face uh, that face us. They're going to spend a whole lot of time on defense uh, with their linebackers reading guards. They're pulling this way. Mm-hmm. You're you know, well. If we give them a lot of different formations, they've also got to, during the week, be prepared how to line up to all these different formations. Well, that's Mm -hmm. going to take away from their time of those linebackers or whoever reading their keys. Mm -hmm. And so, um, plus, you know, we're going to give a whole lot of different formations from the standpoint we want to try to outflank people. And Mm -hmm. so, at some point, one of our formations, we're going to outflank people and then we're going to be, you know, we'll hit it on that side whenever they do bump then we've got those, the same exact play just going the other side, but we may be unbalanced on one other side. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've talked all over the country on this stuff and it, it's been uh, um, a lot of people have asked questions about the formations and so forth. We think that our formation is actually a system within itself, you know, mm-hmm. and so and how to move people around to outflank people and get people in trouble. So it's a uh, for us, it's a whole lot of fun, but we don't face the wing T either. So, you know, whenever that's we're true. On it. So uh, so it, it's a whole lot of fun. I like it. It seems like this would be something that young quarterbacks struggle with like you're putting a lot on their plate pretty early on i i imagine so it's something that you want a junior or a senior under center most of the time right well no no not necessarily i mean because hmm. it, it it's it depends upon the um you know if it's a first year starter say he's yeah. a, 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 a sophomore i've started a freshman as quarterback in this system mm-hmm. and uh but if you can teach them the base plays Mm -hmm. and don't put too much on them, then everything works perfectly. Now, if you can Mm -hmm. add the quarterback run out of it or the quarterback buck sweep or, you know, different things with it, it, it's great. But Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you can teach them just the basic parts of it, and then all it is is you're trying, and I tell the quarterbacks this all the time, you're trying to be a magician. And so mm. we're trying to get the ball and turn our back to the linebackers as soon as possible. And so mm. if we can work on that and we bird dog our steps every single day from day one until we're playing the last round of the playoffs that we're playing in, you mm. know, we're, we're, we're bird dogging our steps and make sure our steps are perfect. And um, so, um, and they, they seem to enjoy it. Plus, you know, playing a, playing a young kid in there at quarterback, it, it's, it's not that big of a deal, really. I mean, now, you know, it's tougher to play a younger kid at one of the wing backs or, or somewhere like that, because they've, mm. they've got, they've got to buy into, these kids have got to buy into that they're not a zone tailback or a running back there where they're going to get it, you know, 20, 25 times. We've got mm. three running backs back there and, you know, each one of them may get it 12 times or mm. they may get it, you know, one may get it if they get hot, one of them may get it 15 times or 18 times, the other one get it six. But, you know, I always tell them, you know, if you don't block, you don't carry the rock. So, you don't, you know, if, if so, if you got to be able to commit to doing your job, same mm -hmm. way with the quarterback. Okay. And you're talking about being a young kid. If he can go through his steps, okay, properly, you know, and, and carry out his fakes and so forth, I don't care. I really don't care what grade they're in or anything like that. They're going to play. I imagine scrimmaging. So for your defense, because your offensive personnel, you're running wing T, like that's not what they're facing week over week. How do you kind of like prepare your defense with your offense in a completely different set? How do you keep them uh, ready to go for what they'll usually see on Fridays, considering your offense isn't running that kind of stuff? Well, the biggest thing is, with you know, like I said, we also go to the shotgun wing tee some. Mm. And so we'll we'll have doubles on both sides. We'll have trips open. We'll have whatever and with a lot of motion. And mm. um, so we'll whenever we go against the defense, that's that's what we'll run whenever they need to see, you know, okay. during the preseason, you know, mm -hmm. per se. Uh, whenever we're doing scout cards or something like that, and we've got the offense over there and we're running through some stuff. I mean, they're they're used to getting in doubles or like mm. I said, trips open or whatever, you know, and so um so it's not it's not that big of a big of an issue for us. It's so interesting. Like I was watching uh Colquitt and doing some tape study on Colquitt Valdosta. They had a crazy game last fall and uh, you see some stuff where I, <laughs> you'll see a coach jump up and down where you'll see it where it's like uh, making sure a quarterback sees this read where it's like because it, it's mostly a one read situation for most of these right. guys. And it, you just look at it and you're like, oh, they're in cover zero. They're in tight man. And this tight end is just going to torch this linebacker. He's going over like it's over. He's in the hash like it's it's mm -hmm. done. And they're just making sure that's your read right there. Do you I, I just I'm so fascinated because your team like you're you're just not doing that you're not having these uh, cover zero situations where you're getting man yeah. on man we're like hey look outside like that you need to know where this ball needs to go right now like this is the situation go here yeah. um do a lot of guys want that like or do they just know that going in like this is the style and those kind of scenarios are just not going to be a part of our offense ever yeah i mean uh, you know it they've never brought it up to me mm -hmm. i mean if they if they if, you know I, are wondering it or, you know, asking months, but I've never heard it, but, yeah. you know, um, you know, and I mentioned earlier that I, I used to coach down in, in Georgia. I, I coached for, uh, I was an assistant coach down there and I worked for a guy named Jeff Heron. And, oh yeah. He's got yeah. a uh, Camden now, Camden. right? He's at Camden yeah. now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I probably learned more from him than any coach I've ever learned huh. learned anything from. He is just unbelievable. And he and he's a machine always, wherever he goes. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, most mm -hmm. unbelievable coach I've ever been around. And he is a tremendous friend of mine. And I would never tell him that personally because he'd get a big <laughs> head. But yeah, uh, you know, high school, college, pro, whatever, any coach that I've talked with, he's the best I've ever been around. Hmm. And he always used to say, you know, this is what we do. And the kid, you know, whenever the kids buy into it, mm -hmm. then, you know, they don't ask questions because we continue to win. So right. they don't ask, you know, if you're not winning, then they're going to ask those questions. Yeah. And, um, you know, 
I've been fortunate enough that, um, you know, my I've been at, at uh, Pigeon Forge actually twice. I don't mm-hmm. know if you knew that or not. Yeah, yeah you and, retired. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had some heart issues and I got mm-hmm. back out and I got out and my cardiologist said that I could go back. And mm-hmm. uh, it took another year for my wife to agree for me to go back. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I came back and mm-hmm. and we've had some success with it. And so the kids really haven't, you know, question very much at all you know because we have had success with it and um, once we do that uh, you know uh, everybody kind of buys in you know the Mm -hmm. question I always ask the players is this what are you going to do to make the person next to you better not Mm -hmm. you know how are you going to be you know what are you going to do today during practice to make your teammate better and you know you got to push yourself and if you push yourself you're going to make your teammate better because he's going to see it and so forth Mm -hmm. once they buy into all that then you don't have those type of questions what have you done differently to kind of make sure that you can keep this thing moving and keep coaching uh in terms of uh why you retired to begin with like or uh, have you coach do you coach differently do you uh just is there just a different perspective now that you have like what uh what's changed uh since before well, the biggest thing is um, I really haven't changed, you know, the way I coach. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't lose my mind quite as much, you know, mm-hmm. but um, during the off season is, is, you know, I don't stress over it during the off season. I'm, mm. um, I tr- actually um, play competitive golf. I travel all over the Southeast uh, okay. and, and play and golf, uh, golf tournaments all over. And, and, uh, so, you know, that gets my mind off of it, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I can move forward with, um, and I'm very, very fortunate. I've got some, some tremendous, um, assistant coaches and so forth. And, and, um, you know, they do a lot of stuff during the off season and, and I, you know, we, we meet quite often, but, um, you know, I'll, I'm not saying every week or anything like that, but we, you know, I'll leave on a, on a Wednesday to go to Florida and spend four days and play in the golf tournament, uh, you know, and a, a mini tour tournament down there for, I did that twice, been in Georgia, been in Mississippi and so forth. And and so I've, I, that's my, uh, what do you say? Get away from everything, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so that, that is really, uh, help me out a lot. I mean, it really has. Mm. And I've been doing that for, for a couple of years now. And, um, it, it's just really, really helped. Any fishing or hunting too, or is it strictly golf as your getaway type deal? No, golf. I don't know anything. Now my sons, they, yeah. they, 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 they hunt and fish, but, but you're not uh, a part of it. You don't go. I am not, I am not, you know, I, I don't, I don't, me personally, I don't, you know, going up, getting up in a tree stand and sitting there in the cold and waiting for mm. a deer to walk by. I'm just not, you know, I'm, that's not me. But, you yeah. know, God love everybody else that does it, but uh, that's not me. So I'd much rather be, uh, you know, on the golf course at being 45 degrees rather than tree stand, you know. Well, are they golfing with you at all? No, no, my middle son does. He yeah. he golfs with me some. Do you and, let him uh, win at all, or are you just like I'm gonna kick your tail right now? I'm I'm not going easy on you. Oh, I don't go easy on him. <laughs> <laughs> he's 27 years old. I ain't gonna yeah. go easy on you know. And so my oldest son, he's actually uh, um, lives in um, uh, or is actually going to be moving. He's going to be a dad. And my, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm Congratulations. Be Thank you very much. He's he been. He and his wife are moving to Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, uh, next week, but um, you know, and then I've got four grandkids, other grandkids that run around like crazy from our daughter, do- you know, our daughter's kids, and and mm. uh, so. Um, but that, but my middle son, he uh, he actually coaches with me, and mm. um, he is actually at Liberty University right now as an mm. intern as a, a strength on strength conditioning and uh, okay. for the football and uh the but um he does a tremendous job but yeah, it takes him off a little bit whenever you know i beat him somewhat so are you pretty uh, close to hugh freeze am i personally mm-hmm. 
No, I, I've never met Hugh Freeze, but okay. no, obviously my son has, but I, I, yeah. I haven't met him at all. And, and I was real proud of him. I mean, he, he's, he did all that. I didn't know. I know a lot of college coaches, so I didn't know anybody at Liberty and mm. he took the initiative and, and did it. And, and, uh, he wants to see if that's the path that he wants to take, you know, get into college strength and conditioning. And, uh, he, he does our strength and conditioning here. And, uh, uh, I probably bugged him way too much up there because I said, okay, yeah, I know what you got to do up there, but you need to send us a workout mm -hmm. <laughs> down here for during summer. So, yeah. uh, you know, so it is what it is, but he, he's doing a great job and, and I'm proud of him. And, and, uh, so we're, uh, uh, but to take it easy on, they wouldn't take it easy on me I'll yeah. tell you, if, at any point in time that, you know, so I'm not going to take it easy on them. If they, if they can beat me, they can beat me, but if they can't, then they're going, they're going to get beaten <laughs> bad. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, when you look at uh, the schedule this fall, what are is there a stretch that you're most excited about? Yeah, I mean we we've got um, of course we open with uh, uh, with Hampton High School mm -hmm. who was in the state championship game last year in two A. Yeah, and um, you know then uh, we've got two really big home ball games. It's ones in the middle of the year, ones at the end of the year. We're playing Sevier County High School. Mm -hmm. uh, at home and we're playing Gatlinburg Pittman at home. And um, so there's really not a kind of a stretch, but, you know, those couple of ball games are going to be really big for us. And, and uh, you know, whenever we're playing Sevier County, who's, you know, quite a bit bigger than, you know, school than we are. And mm. uh, th that'll kind of show us where we're at. And, uh, you know, we played them last year, got beat 14, nothing, had five turnovers and, and we had four inside the 20 yard line going in the score. So, mm. I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those that, um, you, I, you know, the, one of the biggest questions I asked the players after the game was, I said, okay, I said, how many of you hoped that we were going to win this ball game? And mm. of course, every one of them raised their hand. And I said, that was the problem. I mm. said, because you, I don't want you to hope anything. I said, you better believe that we're going to win. Whenever you start believing that you're going to win, that's whenever you're going to win big games. So, so it's going to be a good game for us and, and so forth. So, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the season and uh, getting everything started. It's an interesting schedule. I mean, you got three or four at home to start off and you mentioned the Sevier County game, but then at Alcoa, at Scott, at Northview, Austin East at home, and then at Happy Valley. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> that's a rough uh, away from home kind of stretch there uh, for oh, a yeah. while. It's it's not the most balanced home no, and away it's, schedule. It's not. We you know we we tried to uh, last year um, whenever we were redoing our schedule, um, we we called a lot of different people and and um, I was wanting to obviously play people that are our size school other than mm. Sevier County and. Um, you know, a lot of things didn't work out for one reason or the other. And, but, um, you know, I had a lot of big schools, six, a schools call them to play us. Of course I wasn't going to do that, but, mm. um, so it, it was, uh, I know we got to travel a lot, but, um, you know, I also want our players to see, um, where we need to get to. In other words, you know, we, we, we play Hampton high school and even though that's a long way away, that's a heck of a football team, you know, and yeah. then we're going to travel up to Upper East Tennessee a couple of times. And, and then we're, of course, playing Scott County. Scott County used to be in our, our region. So mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of comfortable with that. And, and um, so it, it's, uh, we're kind of all over the map a little bit, but, you know, it, it we've got to, uh, we've got to be able to, uh, you know, play, at any point in time, anywhere, anywhere we can. And so uh, that's, that's what I want our guys to get used to. What are, what's, what's it going to take to get uh, Camden County on the schedule? We got to get the Heron Meadows ball. We got to get that. Uh, going. That's not, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Who whenever, get from I, Georgia? Honest, we, yeah. whenever I, the first time I was here mm -hmm. at Pigeon Forge, um, he was at Grayson high school. Yeah. Oh, I know Grayson very well. Yeah. 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 And at our uh, house. Yeah, and he he wanted he want, he said that he would pay us to come down there and play if mm -hmm. if we'll come. Well, I mean, he'd have to pay for hospital bills. I mean, <laughs> he'd have to pay for a lot of things. I said, I'm not. I said, buddy. I said, there's no way possible that that's happening. So was this a Kim uh, Dietschy year? I'm sorry. Was this a Kim Dietschy year when Robert was no, there? No, 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 no. This no, is after no. that. It, it was after him. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, they actually had. Uh, uh, 
who was the quarterback that went to Clemson. Oh, um, Chase Bryce. Yes, they had him mm-hmm. and and the the linebacker Owen something. I can't pronounce his last name. He went to Auburn and uh, yeah, I yeah. He was just a sophomore, and I went mm-hmm. down and watched him practice. And and uh, it was about two weeks later, he called me about playing. I said, dude, I said, there's no way, and, you know, yeah. that that's going to happen. So, uh, but it's it's a. Uh, yeah, that who's the best one then? Who can we get on the Georgia schedule for you? Who do you think is the is there someone I'm trying to think off the top of my head who would make the most sense uh that wouldn't get you killed down there? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Maybe Cartersville. Look, Cartersville could be fun. I have played, I have coached uh, and coached against many teams down in Georgia. Yeah. And, and you know, Georgia football and Tennessee football is two different animals. I mean, I tell people, man, like as someone who's watched a lot of both and been around uh, both sides and been up close, it's just different. Like it's just not even close. Seven day football in Georgia is just a different animal than anywhere else. Yeah, there's not a there's really not a comparison. There's Mm. really good football teams up here. I'm not taking anything away from it. But you take those elite teams here and play the elite teams down there and they're it's not it's not going it's not pretty i mean it's yeah. just not you know and and i had a guy that i grew up with um from i don't know fifth grade on uh mm-hmm. he was a head coach at south forsyth down there yep. jeff arnett and uh yeah he just he, retired and then troy yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. he was in the he, pot a couple weeks ago yeah yeah he actually caddied for me um <laughs> Back on May 31st in the U.S. Senior Open qualifier. There you go. So, anyway, so I've known him forever. And um, this was a few years back. And they were playing Coquit. And I'm going to say it was mm. in the quarterfinals. And uh, Is this the Rush Probst year? Yes, yes, okay. yes. And um, he said, because uh, I knew he had four or five kids, got D1 offers and so forth. Mm. I said, well, I've got a pretty good shot, don't you? He said, he said <laughs> Mattis, he said they've got like twenty something kids that's got division one yeah. offers. <laughs> so no, no. But he played them to the wire. I didn't mm. know that. He played them to the wire. So uh, it's just different. I mean, it's just yeah. different. You know, uh, it, it, and you can't you can't appreciate it unless you've seen it. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's just the way it is. But it's okay. It's just like I mean, in college football, there's something awesome about watching a Sun Belt game, and there's set like I. App State and Marshall was a lot of fun last year. Oh, it's yeah. like, man, yeah. it just it's just different. It's fun, but it's also like we don't have to do the whole, oh, how does Cincinnati stack up against Bama? It's like, well, obviously those are two different worlds that live in, but it's still really good mm-hmm. football and it still can be really fun in oh, a yeah. different way. It doesn't yeah. all have to be about titles and being the best of the best and that sort of thing. Right. Um, it is interesting too. I'm curious, like with you, I imagine with your offense and what y'all are doing each week, and getting the scouting report and looking at who the other teams have, I imagine you have a pretty good feel week to week if you have a, if you're going to win or lose. Like I think more so than a lot of other coaches, I would imagine you're like they have nothing for this. They they cannot stop the run. They're not going to be. They don't have the guys. They don't have the pieces. We're going to run all over them, and they're just going to have to. They're going to have to bend to yeah. what we're doing. And then other times you're like, oh god, like it, this offense. I I don't know. I think they're the path to us winning this one. I feel like there's not a lot of upsets with with your style, right? Well, usually not. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you know, you play somebody and you and you really, you know, break them down and so mm-hmm. forth, break their defense down, and and you know, you know where you can attack, and and the the problem with us, um, whenever we're breaking down an opponent's defense, is mm-hmm. they're not playing a wing T team the week. Right. The, the, you know, and so we don't know exactly how they're going to line up. Mm. Very rarely do we play a team that line, say they're a base three, four or whatever. Yeah. That they line up the way they did the week before or the two weeks mm. before we get those two films. And so that's the good thing about this offense. You don't necessarily block a man, you block an mm. area and you run your rule. And mm. uh, so uh so those are the good things now you know um then you i mean then you turn the film on against alcoa and you know it is what it is you know and you know i remember last year um i was midway through the first no midway through the second quarter and i turned to one of my coaches and i said i've called every play on this sheet <laughs> I said, and, and we've gained two as the biggest you know I said, is this the playoff game oh yes yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, uh, we uh, we didn't play them in a regular season because we yeah. co- we had a COVID uh, right. deal, and so mm. um, 
you know, we could have played, but I've been bringing, uh, we had, I think, eight starters out and yeah. uh, I've been, been playing a lot of freshmen. And so, I mean, I wasn't going to You don't want Alcoa with a bunch of freshmen. No, 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 no. And that wouldn't have been fair to Alcoa, you yeah. know. And so, um, but, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, if my kids, and I, we don't talk about winning and losing, mm. we talk, you know, if they give me everything that they've got, no mm. matter what the outcome is, then I'm never going to get on to them. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, if they give me 100% effort. So watching the film and then going into the game, if there is an upset and I know that we are better than them mm. and um, they don't give me the effort, <laughs> even if we do win by a little bit and they're still not giving me the effort, then, then we've got a little bit of a problem. For Pee Wee up, is there kind of like has it permeated down to make it easier when guys get to ninth grade, tenth grade, and stuff like that, where they're running a lot of wing T at the the youth level? Is that is that common in the Pigeon Forge area? Yeah, I mean, that's, um, in a couple of uh, we, of course, we go. We've got like four different you know groups there, and, and yeah, uh, but. Actually, my quarterback from mm -hmm. the 2016 team actually coaches uh, the group right before they come to the middle school. Okay, that's good. That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so our middle school runs it, we run mm -hmm. it, and then that group before they get to the middle school, you know, they're running it. So mm -hmm. that helps out a whole lot. And, you know, our numbering system, they've got to know if they can learn it there uh, because it's completely different. Uh, it's not even one side odd, one side. It's a completely different uh, numbering system. So if they can learn it in that fifth grade and then move up to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and then whenever they get in high school, it's just kind of second nature to them. What was the most rewarding part of coaching last year's group? Just watching them grow. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we had uh, we had a defensive lineman that did a tremendous job. Um, and the year prior to that, he was my starting quarterback. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and he was a wing T quarterback. And yeah. I mean, the kid was, you know, 6'1", about, you know, 220. And yeah. um, so we had a uh, all-state nose guard. He signed with uh, East Tennessee State. And uh, mm -hmm. we were losing him, so we were going to bump another kid down. And so uh, to nose guard, and so we, you know, we were worried to death about that other defensive end spot, and mm -hmm. and um, my defense coordinator came to me and um, he said, "Do you think such and such is going to be able to be quarterback this next year?" And we had a young kid coming up, and I said, mm -hmm. uh, "It's going to be doubtful." He said, well, "I want him as a defensive end," and um, I, was, you know, I kind of <laughs> kind of looked at him a little weird there for a little bit, and I said, "Are you kidding?" He goes, "No." He said, I'll make something out of him, I promise you. I said, okay. I said, that's fine. I said, you're huh. bringing him in and talking to him, though. So, but, and he did a tremendous job. So he was in. Like, you didn't have to sell it. He was in on the change. Oh, 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. and, and that goes back to the winning part of it where they don't question. I mean, they just mm -hmm. don't question what's going on. They 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 just want to win, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's that's been the good part about it. So, um, you know, and we had a lot of young kids last year, a whole mm -hmm. lot of young kids. Um, we started two freshmen last year, you know, and so a whole lot of young kids grew up and, um, you know, our first ball game of the year, um, we had six guys starting on the offensive side that had not only not started in a high school varsity game, but they had never mm -hmm. played in a high school varsity game before. Yeah. So, um, they, uh, so watching them grow throughout the years that went on, it was, it was very beneficial. That's really cool. Um, so when um, when you think about this upcoming year, what uh, what would you like to see most? Is there like a I, I I know you don't want to put wins and losses on and everything, but what uh, what are you most looking forward to from this group uh, bouncing from from last year? What are you most looking forward to seeing? Well, um, like I I told them this before we left for dead period, you know, mm. uh, the twenty twenty team, you know build a really good foundation I mean, mm. and you know we we go seven and four eight and four whatever it was and then last year's group started building you mm. know 
And so this year's group, I want them to continue to build what we can build at Pigeon Forge High School. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the biggest thing is, you know, we've got to, whether wins win or lose, you know, Mm -hmm. the biggest thing is we want to continue to, um, for teams that's going to be playing us, no, for 48 minutes, they're going to be in a battle, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. We're not going to do anything but play as hard as we can from, you know, the opening kickoff to the last whistle. And so, you know, that that's what I'm looking forward to and just kind of seeing some of these young guys that's going to have to step up and play and um, take some spots of the guys that's left from last year, uh, see, what, see what they're about. That's cool. Um, are you a reader at all? Are you reading anything this summer? What are you getting I into? defenses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it. That is a great answer. I have not heard that one before. I like it. Yeah. No, okay. no, I read a little bit. I do. Okay. What do you read? Yeah. Nonfiction, fiction? What do you get into? Oh, no, no, no. None of that. I'm None not, of that. I'm okay. Not, I'm not, no, 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 no. no. I, I, don't get, don't, you know, listen, you know, whenever I, gradu- <laughs> whenever I graduated college, it was, you know, how they put that thing on your hat. It was, yeah. uh, you know, whatever those, the cap and gown yeah yeah whatever and mom said lottie how come instead of you know it, it's just a miracle that 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 happened so i know about football i know about golf and so the reading part you can ask my english teachers from a long time ago yeah i didn't hit i didn't hit that very hard okay are you watching any shows movies oh yeah my okay wife what are you doing I, my wife and i we uh we binge watch shows. what have you been to watch recently it's actually on Hulu. It was called uh-huh. The Bear. Oh, I've heard about this. Is this the uh, is this the waiting tables show? It was is about the it was about. Um, so we used to watch a show called you might have seen it, uh, Shameless. Yes, yes, that's okay. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, is it good? You remember, you remember mm-hmm. Lip that was yes. on? Okay, he's in this, and he actually uh-huh. is a world renowned. He was a chef at this place that was. Just absolutely unbelievable. His, uh-huh. his uh, brother died and left him a just a greasy spoon restaurant, and so yeah. uh, that's how it all starts. And so it, it's uh, so he's actually the owner of it, and uh, mm. he's got a band of misfits in there. And uh, so he he uh, it, it's a great show. It really is. Okay. And we just finished it yesterday. There you go. How many seasons? Is it one? Oh, it's just the first season. Just the first okay. season just came out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I'd recommend that to anybody. Okay. We'll end on this. Dollywood. Uh, what's your favorite spot? Do you have a favorite ride, a favorite thing to do at Dollywood? You know, it's, it's fun. Somebody else asked me that not too long ago. Mm. Uh, do you go to Dollywood all the time? I went, we, we moved up here in 2013. I went in mm. 2013. Uh, I've not been back. So, oh wow, <laughs> I have not. And yeah. uh, it's not that it's not a tremendous place, I'm not saying that mm-hmm. at all. But, um, you know, whenever whenever I got hired up here, my superintendent, whenever he offered me the job, he said, he said, Coach, he said, I want to tell you, he said, you know, you go to work every day, but you're on vacation every day. And so, hmm. there's so many things to do, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, like my daughter and, and her husband and, and grandkids, they've all got a a season pass and so forth. And, mm. uh, you know, whenever they go and my wife sometimes goes, uh, to Dollywood, well, as you're going from our house to Dollywood, you pass a golf course. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's variable golf mm. course right there. Yes. So I mm. stop right there So <laughs> and they, they go on. So, <laughs> well, do you have a favorite Pigeon Forge spot? Is there a best restaurant location? Oh what, yeah. Your favorite? yeah. I mean, I would, if, yeah, I can't. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow just for a checkup, but uh, yeah. I can't tell her this. But uh, Blue Moose, <laughs> okay. Blue Moose, oh man, it, it's uh, what kind of food is it? Yeah, well, the only thing that I think's there is chicken wings. Okay. So, oh, how do you do your wings? God. Wet oh, or dry? God. Oh, wet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, Flats uh, or drums? I'm sorry. Flats or drums? Oh, drums. Oh. Drums. I would not have taken you as a drum guy. Oh, 100%. 100%. Like all drums. No, you're not a flats guy whatsoever. No. no. Okay. No, no. And uh, hmm. they've got they've got everything there, but it's yeah. it's uh, 
kind of a, you know, in a little shopping mall type deal there. And, mm -hmm. and, um, it's, uh, oh, nice. it is, it's, uh, look it up. I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's tremendous now. Blue Moose. Uh, well, we'll be there in a couple of weeks. So we're going to, okay. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to check this out. Blue Moose. There you go. And I'll report back to you. And yeah, please do. Think. Please do. Scott, how do the good folks uh, support uh, Pigeon Forge football this summer, this fall? What can, uh, what can they do for all the East Tennessee listeners today? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? You broke up on me. Oh, what can uh, the good folks do to support Pigeon Forge football uh, this summer and this fall uh, for the East Tennessee folks? Oh, well, the biggest thing, you know, we've got tremendous support here. I mean, mm -hmm. we do. And, um, you know, the um, uh, they can come out and, you know, uh, just support the guys. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, the players love running out on the field and the stands being packed and so forth. But, you know, we've got – a tremendous city. Um, we've got people that support us like crazy. We're just now finishing a, a brand new uh, two-story field house in the in the end zone. There you it's, go. You know, it's over eight thousand square feet. I mean, it, it's just tremendous. You know, and uh, we mm. got new turf down on the field, and uh, the other day, and or they finished it the other day, and I mean, it, it's uh, you know that they. they you know, if they want to come out and, um, you know, I think we've got one of the prettiest settings. I know Gatlinburg mm. has got the view uh, that is fantastic, but, you know, not too many times that you're uh, on the home side and the play, the game's going on. And then you can look over at the island and Pigeon Forge and see the Ferris wheel going around. Can you <laughs> so, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure can. Sure can. So it's, uh, you know, you see the lights in the back, you know, yeah. from the, I mean, we're just, we're two blocks off the parkway, you know. The okay. Field. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm coming to a game up, this fall. Which game do I go? Which game do I go to this fall? What what game do you want me at, Coach, on the sideline? Sevier County. Okay. Sevier County. Sevier County. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Sevier County. And uh, come by and and uh, we'll uh, we'll treat you right. I guarantee it. It's it's a uh, it's a great place. Tremendous place. There you go, Coach. This has been a lot of fun. I greatly appreciate you making the time this evening. Uh, we'll have to check back in again soon. Hey, anytime. I appreciate you having me.